Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Round 2 Blazing Bison Pulling Tractor, a 125th scale kit from AMT number 1006. This is a re-release of the Meister Brawl Blazing Bison Pulling Tractor that hasn't been seen since 1986. The kit's a skill level 3 for ages 12 and over and requires glue and paint to finish. This time, it's been repopped and uses the same box cover but has removed the Meister Brawl logos and references from the artwork, making it a generic puller uh, in this version. Now there's over 150 parts molded in yellow, chrome, black, and vinyl tires with metal axles, and the decals are water slide and the instruction sheets a fold out. Now the kit comes with three huge blown motors that are just begging to be wired. There's little else but fuel lines to run for a contest kit. You'll have to take your time on this kit though, as fit and finish require extra effort from this old mold design. The overall dimensions when finished are about 8 inches in length, 5 inches in width, and 3 inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Now here's a bonus. We're going to give you what the other reviewers call this an inbox review in 10 seconds or less. To help with paint coverage over the colored styrene, use a good quality primer and coat all of the yellow parts with a thin coat of primer. Now pull these parts out to assemble all three motors. First put together the block, heads, oil pan, front cover, rally pan, runners, plate, and oil pump. Then paint this aluminum. Now note, on one of the motors, the oil pump is a little different and sits above the notch. I didn't use the distributors because I wanted to install my own wired distributors, but if you do, they are steel and red. The valve covers are black. Add the valve covers, then assemble the blower body with the front, bat, and the back. Now assemble the scoop and paint the butterflies red. Install the blower and add the oil pump front. To add some needed detail to this kit, I wired the motors with some pre-wired distributors that I made from some simple small wires and some styrene. Now there's a lot of brands out there too that you can buy, but I used a, a wiring diagram and then first drilled out the hole for the shaft and installed it with super glue. Then drill out the locations on the valve covers for the spark plugs, cut a small part of black wire for the boots and slide it on each wire, then match up the wires with the diagram and put them into place. Then add the coil and the center wire with it cut fitting, uh, fit sitting on the motor. Then install the headers. Now we'll assemble what I would consider are the largest tires I've ever seen in a 125 scale model. Note that the front and the rear tires of course have different size holes and paint the rim backs aluminum. Install the wheel weights to the rim fronts and then add the brake discs to the rim backs. Now install both the inner and outer rims. Paint the hub's aluminum for the front tires and they'll be assembled next. Then sandwich the hub in the front rim and back and glue those together. Now slide the tire over the rim sides and into place. Now assemble the puller body and paint it body color that you choose. Then assemble the driver and paint him. His suit is white with red trim and he has black helmet and glasses, gloves and boots. The puller body is orange and yellow and the instrument stock is orange with the instruments detailed and the pedals are flat black. Now detail the instruments on the dash panel with some silver trim with white, black and red. I used a drop of clear for the lenses to make it look more realistic and then the wheel is black and installed. I painted the seat for the driver black and I placed it in as is the driver but I didn't glue them at this time because I'll clear coat the decals later but place the pedals, instrument panel, and all the parts based on where the driver sits. Now glue everything into place except the seat and the driver. 
Using some setting solution and plenty of warm water, apply the decals to the puller body. Then remove the seat and the driver after you've finished and they've dried, and then clear coat that to seal in the decals. Once the clear coat dries, you can uh, glue the, the driver and the seat in, and then we'll start the chassis. Paint the rails yellow to fade to orange, and then add the decals. Then the suspension assembled completely with the differential, the wheel wheelie bars, the tow hitch top and bottom, and as a unit that is painted red, as are the hitch supports. The gear case, drive shaft, and assembled transmission are painted black. Now the fuel tank is assembled and the battery is black. Now note, install the suspension with the supports first. Add the short drive shaft with the transmission in place and the two notches in the frame. Then add the longer drive shaft with the gear case and battery in the first long notch in the frame. Now add the bell housing to the short notch in the frame. The fuel tank is mounted to the bell housing and the gear case. Add the body in place on the frame and note the green arrows there to make sure that the body sits up straight to mate the gear housing and to the instrument stock. Now we'll mount the first motor in the location of the existing bell housing. The gear case, drive shaft, and starter are black and the side panels are orange with the decals. Now add the side panels into the holes in the frame. Then the drive shaft is in the upper hole in the gear case and the starter in the lower and the gear case mounts to the frame notches. The belt is rubber color and add the belt to the motor with the starter and the belt guard. Now we'll mount the second motor with the bell housing in the frame notches. Then the motor attaches to it. Now paint the side panels yellow and the, with the decals and install uh, in the holes in the frame. Paint the gear case black and install in the frame notches. Once again the belt is rubber and installed in the motor with the starter and the blower guard. Gather up the parts for the third and forward motor. Um, this one's a little different because the distributor is mounted uh, a little bit differently. Now mount the bell housing to the motor and mount the motor to the existing gear case. Then paint the forward mount black and install that in the frame. And paint the belt rubber color and install that with the starter and the blower belt guard. Now notice I did not use the side panels that uh, they had included here because in my research of the vehicle I couldn't see an example where they were used. Also, referencing the green arrows here, note that during the motor assembly the notches didn't seem to line up for me and the motor seemed to be a little too big for the frame position. Also, I had some issues with the bell housing on the last motor not really fitting in its location. Now, that might take some finagling to try and do, but um, I'm not sure if it was the assembly process or I couldn't find any errors where I made any mistakes. So, I glued the parts to the frame instead of the tab area where the instructions say. Grab these parts to build the front suspension and assemble the tie rod to the axle and paint that yellow. Then install that to the frame. The water tank is assembled then and assemble the tank support and the brace and paint that yellow and add the decal and install to the frame horns. Add the tank. The fire extinguisher is painted red in aluminum and that's installed. And the weight bar is painted red and installed on the frame. Pull out the tires that were assembled and install the front tires to the front axle and then the rear tires are installed on the metal axle in the rear suspension. Now that completes the build for the tractor itself. The puller has some weights that can be added. These are black on the sprues and could be left that way with the texture as they really look quite nice but uh, the original tractor had red ones so I painted them red. I thought these added to the overall appearance uh, pretty nicely so I added a few to the rear bar in the front and then I located the rest on the side weight bars. This kit comes with some neat little extras that you can paint and add to the build, build in a diorama type setting. You get a toolbox with some chrome tools, a little cooler full of ice and some drinks, and a gas tank and an extra helmet and a wagon to pull it all in. I paint these uh, just the way I felt so you can do whatever you'd like as well. There will be just an extra few pieces left over from this kit. Some batteries and of course here the distributors that I replaced and the side panels that I didn't use. I was excited when I got this kit to build and I couldn't wait to get into it 
and all the way through the motors it was pretty nice but once I got to the chassis I started finding the fit and finish problems especially the uh, area where the motors are to be lined up and, and glued in uh, they, they just seemed too short for a proper fit so the overall length seemed to be fine but I couldn't uh, fit the motors into the notches in any way so if you're um, you know a perfectionist you may have problem with the kit but if you just you know um, find a good location on the frame and use some super glue to establish your mounting point for the motors it'll still look great and uh, you can finish your kit that way for a coolness factor <laughs> this one's over the top I mean where else are you going to get a puller tractor model to build so I think if you just stick with it uh, you'll have a great time and it'll be a great kit for your display we hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks!